There we go. All right, y'all. So um, my name again is Megan, and I'm here to talk to you guys today about second degree pre-licensure application and financial aid information. So you are in the right session if you currently have a bachelor's degree, but you do not have a nursing degree. Um, I'm going to kind of cover all of that here. Um, and so if you do have a nursing degree, or if you don't have a bachelor's degree, you are not in the right session, go back and check the scheduling um, and we'll get you guys in the right spot. All right, so let's get grooving here. Okay, so I'm gonna go through all of the different programs and their application process and deadlines. Um, you guys have probably seen these dates online, but we do work on hard admissions deadlines, which means that if you get your application in by a certain date, you will receive on another date. So for our in Emory MN program, um, we have two application deadlines. Spring applications for that program are currently open. You can find them on our website. Um, our first deadline was June 1st. So for those of you all who submitted an in Emory application by June 1st, you will receive an admissions decision on July 16th. Um, and works is you will receive an email in your inbox letting you know that you've had an application status update and that application status update will lead you to your admission decision. Um, our second deadline for this program is September 1st and for those of you who apply on September 1st you will hear back on October 15th. If we do have any seats left in the cohort we will to keep that application open until October 15th um, and so students may apply up until that October 15th date and then at that point, we just switched to rolling admission where we're getting our decisions out to you all as soon as we possibly can. Um, that being said, I would, as an applicant, I would not expect any of our applications to stay open this year. Um, if last year was any indication, we have been receiving more um, applications than ever before. And so definitely try to stick to these dates if at all possible. Um, it will increase the likelihood that you'll be admitted as long as you're sticking to these application deadlines. Um, next are our Masters of Nursing and our Masters of Nur Nursing Pathway to Masters of Science in Nursing programs. Um, these programs start in fall and summer, respectively, um, and they their applications are also open now. So these applications have already um, opened up, and you are welcome to start those applications to begin in fall of 2022 and summer of 2022. Um, early decision is those applications are due on August 2nd. Early decision is not binding. So this is not the same as an undergraduate early decision. Um, this is not binding. If you are admitted, you do still have the option to either accept or deny your admission. Um, early decision just allows us to consider you for our two biggest internal scholarships. Um, so those are going to be our FOLD and our Woodruff scholarships, which are half tuition and full tuition scholarships. So if you are interested in either of those scholarships, make sure that you have applied by that August 2nd date, um, because that is going to allow you to be considered for those scholarships. Um, students who apply by August 2nd will receive a decision back on August 20th. And then this kind of runs down the list as well. Priority is September 15th, decision on October 29th, regular decision one, December one, January 14, regular decision two, January 25 to March 18. Um, again, I'm going to uh, highly encourage you guys to make sure that because we're having this conversation now, um, that you apply by that regular decision deadline. Um, that second regu regular decision deadline exists if we have positions available in the cohort. And in all transparency in 2021, we did not have any positions left in either of these cohorts by that second regular decision deadline. So the best thing you can do for your application is apply early. Um, seriously, y'all, if you take nothing else from this session, please take this bit of information that the best thing you can do is apply early. Um, it is going to help us, it is going to help you. So um, definitely something to keep in mind, um, just trying to make sure that you are getting that application in this year, 2021, um, for those start dates in 2022. All right, so what are we looking for in an application? Um, you guys have probably heard the, the term holistic review floating around a little bit, um, and I'll try to keep it simple and um, kind of short because this is something that I could really go on and on about. But essentially, holistic review just means that we are trying to understand who you are as a total student. 
Um, and that means looking outside of traditional merit-based um, statistics when we're looking at your application. So typically how I describe holistic review is if you think of your application as a house, your GPA is gonna be the foundation. It's what the house is built upon. So our average admitted cumulative GPA is a 3.5, but that's an average. So it means that we do have some students above a 3.5 and we have some students below a 3.5. Um, and so a solid GPA specifically in your prerequisite courses is gonna give you a really strong foundation to the house, but that's not all that we're looking at, right? We're looking at the whole house. So we're also looking at things like leadership experience, community engagement and social responsibility, um, who you are as a person and why you want to be a nurse. And where we find these kind of intangible qualities is through your optional personal statement. Um, so step one in that is taking the time to complete it. It is optional. So if you really feel like your academic preparation speaks for itself, um, you know, you can opt out of it, but it's not something that I would ever recommend opting out of um, because this is our way to get to know you as a person, as a student, and as a future nurse. Um, it is a short personal statement, so please do take the time. Um, I believe it's about 350 words. So take the time to just let us get to know more about you as a student. Um, the other way that we're learning these things is through your resume. So we are looking for a CV style resume. And all that means is that while we are looking for the hard facts of your resume, where you went to school, where your employment has been, we're also looking at the skills that you gained from those jobs. So if you have a job that gave you really strong customer service skills, or you have a job in which you were caring for marginalized groups, um, you know, let us know that that was part of that position so that we see that you're drawn towards those types of opportunities. Um, we have a lot of students that start these programs as second careers. And so there are things that you can glean from your current position, be that you know a CPA, um, somebody working in research or somebody working in sales. There are qualities and characteristics that you gain from those life experiences that are gonna help make you an amazing nurse. So please let us know about those because that's how we get to as a student through the application process. We do have about a 36% acceptance rate overall. Um, and so that is throughout all of our program. Um, you know, I think that it is important to know the acceptance, but definitely don't um, let that discourage you because we really are um, trying to look at students as a whole and not just those statistics that come through in your cumulative GPA and your test scores. Um, so as far as cohort size, our Masters of Nursing cohort is roughly about 110 to 115 students. Our N. Emory cohort is about 80 students. And then our MN Pathway to MSN um, is about 140 students. So I think we've got some stuff happening in the chat. I'm going to see. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so one question that I think is good that I'm going to go ahead and address is what is the difference between priority and early decision? Um, so priority decision is just going to be, and let me go back and make sure that I am stating this correctly. Yes. Yeah. So this early decision is going to be what allows you to be considered for those two big scholarships. Um, that's going to be the Woodruff and the Fold. And then the priority decision is going to allow you to be considered for all academic scholarships. So we do have many, many, many other academic scholarships that we're able to consider you for in either one of these start dates. Um, so hopefully that makes sense and that's, you know, that's clear. Any other follow-ups on that? Is there any other questions? You guys can pop that in the chat. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to get into, okay. I'm going to get, I promise guys, I'm going to get to some of these questions <laughs> towards the end. Um, so give me just a second. I just wanted to make sure that that one, one point was clear, but keep popping those questions into the chat. I promise I'll get to them at the end. All right. So um, application. So this is a list of our application requirements, and this is what we're looking for um, from each one of our applications, from our applicants. Um, so the first thing is that application for admission. That's that simple form that you see online that you log in and fill out all of your biographical information and all of um, that good stuff. We do have a $50 application fee. And then this is the biggie. We require a transcript from every post-secondary school that you have attended. 
And what that means is after high school, if you took a college class, we need a transcript from that college. So I'll give you guys an example. Um, when I was in college, it was very hard to get into the public speaking course at my university. So over the summer at a community college at home, I took public speaking. It was one class. I took it as a transient course. It showed up on my general college transcript from my university. I would still need to submit a transcript directly from that community college to have my application be considered complete. So even if you only took one class, even if you only took a handful of classes, even if it shows up on another transcript, we need that original transcript from every school that you attended. Um, the good news is that we do accept unofficial transcripts for review. Um, so you just need to submit those unofficials. And then if you're admitted, you can go back through and get us all of those official transcripts, but for review. So to be considered complete by that deadline, we just need those unofficial transcripts. Um, we do require a resume. Um, this is really important because a lot of times um, the resume or lack thereof will hold up your application in the application process, and we really don't want that. So please, please, please make sure that you upload a resume. Um, we do require a TOEFL score if English is a second language for you. Um, the one exception to that is if you have completed a bachelor's degree at an English speaking institution, we will waive that TOEFL score. And then again, um, there is an optional personal statement um, that is part of the application process. I would highly recommend completing this. Um, it's really only going to help you. Um, we do not require a test score any longer. So uh, no worries there, no T's, no GRE, no nothing. I will say if you have a test score that you feel like enhances your application. So for in Emory and Masters of Nursing students, that's either going to be the T's or the GRE. Or if you're an MN pathway to MSN student, that's going to be the GRE. And if you feel like that enhances your application, if it um, you know, helps you out, then I would go ahead and submit that as a supplemental material. There's nothing wrong with submitting it if you have it, um, but I certainly would not go out of my way to take an extra standardized test. We no longer require it. Um, and between you and me, uh, I do think that a lot of colleges are moving away from standardized tests, which is a beautiful thing. We're happy to see that. So um, just as to shed a little bit of light as to what would Help your application in the standardized test world. I would say anything above an 85 on the T's. And as long as all three sections of the GRE are above 50th percentile, um, that's going to be a benefit to your application. Anything other than that, leave it off. All right, pre prerequisites. Um, so we do have seven prerequisite courses that we require. Uh, Gen Chem, Human AMP 1 and 2, Microbio, Nutrition, Stats, and human growth and development. Um, just a couple of notes on these, the AMP 1 and 2, as well as the microbio, do need to have been taken within the past seven years. All of the rest of the classes can have been taken at time. Um, and then human growth and development can also be called lifespan development, developmental psychology, um, a lot of different development courses. We just need to make sure that the course is covering uh, kind of what we call cradle to grave. So uh, from conception through death in that prerequisite for human growth and development. Your prerequisites do not need to be completed at the time of your application. Um, you just need to make sure that you're completing the course with at least a C or higher by the time your program starts. Um, and we do review prerequisites um, individually for students. So, you know, if you have a course that's that's named something a little bit different, or if you're not sure um, after you've applied, make sure that you send us an email and just give us a little heads up to that prerequisite. Um, and we will take a look at that. Um, we do not offer prerequisite reviews um, for students before you apply. So we do need to have that application in, in order for us to review your prerequisites. Um, the last thing on these is that you do need to take these prerequisites at a regionally accredited institution. Um, that institution can be online and the labs can be online, but you do need to make sure that it's regionally accredited. The big one here that can sometimes be a hiccup is that we do not accept credits from straighter line, um, but we do love the Portage learning classes, which are somewhat similar, um, fully online, self-paced. All right, I'm going to pop into the chat box again here really quick, just to make sure that there's nothing that I'm skipping over. Um, is biostats acceptable for statistics? Yes, it is. So biostats will cover that. Okay. 
All right. So just a couple of points of clarification here. Um, so we are able to still review your application with those prerequisites in progress. And it's not going to affect the ability of your application to be reviewed if you do still have those red X's next to your prerequisites. So please don't worry about that. Um, I will say for your checklist, um, it's a manual process. So myself and a few other individuals in our office do review every single transcript that comes in and we manually go through and check those off. Um, so with that, please do um, be patient with us as we do that. It takes about a month for us to get that done from the time that you submit your transcripts. And we do miss things. Um, you know, we are human and the transcripts from schools look very different from one to the next. So if you see that we've missed your microbio course, but we've checked off your chem course and your AMP1 course from the same institution, just drop us a note and let us know where you took the class and what semester. And we'll go back through and correct that. Um, it's a fairly easy process, but it does require a little bit, a little bit of patience on both ends. All right, so the biggie, tuition, scholarships, and financial aid. Um, so tuition for our programs is about $22,810 per semester. Um, and there are kind of two sides to this financial aid coin. The first is scholarships. Um, and scholarships are those beautiful free money opportunities for you guys to get part of your education funded. Um, and there's really two different types of scholarships that are available. The first are those merit-based scholarships, which are available through the School of Nursing, and the second are third-party scholarships. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about third-party scholarships here in just a second, so we'll put a pin in that for now. Your merit-based scholarships are going to be based on your GPA, test scores, and personal statement, as well as your resume. So again, make sure that those things are submitted, um, and you do need to have applied by the priority, so that second admission decision deadline to be considered for merit-based institutional scholarships. Um, one thing to note, if you are part of the NMRE program, you are gonna automatically receive a $10,000 scholarship as part of that program. Um, so that breaks down to $2,500 a semester in scholarships, and that is in exchange for that two-year work requirement um, that comes with that program. Scholarships are the first side of the coin. The second side of that coin is financial aid. Um, so financial aid is going to be based on your FAFSA. We do need a FAFSA to get your financial aid package completed. Um, so definitely make sure that you are completing that for us. Um, and there's going to be three different areas of uh, financial aid. So the first is going to be need-based grants. Um, that's something that the federal government determines, and it is based on your tax return from uh, typically from a year prior. The second is federal unsubsidized loans. Um, almost all of our students will receive federal unsubsidized loans um, as part of their financial aid package. That is a low interest loan that comes from the government. And then now, because all three of these programs are graduate programs, they are eligible for graduate plus loans. So most of our students will be able to complete any of our master's of nursing programs utilizing need-based grants, federal unsubsidized loans, and graduate plus loans. It is very, very, very rare that a student would need to look into private loans, but they are available for all education. This is a conversation that we really want to have with you guys one-on-one. -on -one. So there's a reason I'm kind of going into broad strokes here. Um, so once students are admitted to the program and have completed that FAFSA, there are multiple opportunities for you guys during the application process to set up a time to speak with either myself or Sarah Ray, my counterpart, and we'll have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you, break down your package, break down the numbers, explain direct versus indirect costs and all of that kind of stuff so that you all know exactly what you're looking at when it comes time to apply for all of these different types of loans, apply for scholarships, um, and just make sure that you understand exactly what each bill is gonna look like when you're part of the program. Um, so that's something that we go into after you have applied. All right, so this is a big one too. Um, third party scholarship recommendations. I'll be honest with you guys, there are hundreds upon hundreds of third party scholarships out there for nursing students. Um, but these are just kind of the tried and trues, the ones that we see coming in time after time. Uh, the big one is going to be the HRSA HPSP grant. Um, this is a full tuition scholarship plus a living stipend that's offered through the Health Resource Services of America. Um, HRSA is a government um, funding that provide students funds for education in exchange for working in a veterans um, hospital after they graduate. So this is an amazing program. Um, we send out tons of information about this. You can just do a quick Google search on HPSP. 
it'll pop right up. Um, it is a lengthy, intensive application process, but it is well, well, well worth your time. And we typically see about a dozen students or so getting HPSE each, each year. So it's something that we know our students are, are receiving. Um, the American Association of Collegiate Nursing also has a scholarship database that's amazing. Uh, for all of my students that identify as male, the American Association of Men in Nursing has an amazing scholarship. Um, and then the National Black Nurses Association also has a specific scholarship for students who um, are Black. So there are some amazing scholarships out there. The other thing, and this is really, again, just kind of my best piece of advice, is I would sit down and determine three unique identifiers about yourself, whether that be socioeconomic status, first-generation college student, race, gender identity, whatever those unique identifiers are with you, um, and utilize Google with that identifier plus nursing scholarship. And the results that you're gonna receive from that search are gonna be directed towards you. So it's gonna cut down some of the frustration and looking through scholarships that you, you may not be eligible for. This is going to kind of pinpoint those scholarships directly to who you are as a student. Um, so a lot of great options that way also. The other thing that I always tell students about third-party scholarships is that really third-party scholarships are all about the amount of time that you put in. Um, there's no amount of third-party scholarships that's like the magic number. If you apply to 15, you're going to get one. Um, it really is just up to you and, you know, how much time you have to be looking into these. There is no right or wrong answer. Um, just, you know, whatever you're able to, to apply for. And um, again, if there's ever anything, any paperwork or anything like that that you guys need help for, for with these, we are always available. All right. So that was kind of quick. I know it was a lot of information. I know we've got a lot of questions. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing here. Um, I'm going to take a sip of coffee and then I'm going to hit the ground running with these questions. Um, I'm going to scroll all the way back up to the top. So um, you guys feel free to keep popping those into the chat. Um, and I'm going to try to go through as many of these as I possibly can um, in the next 35 or so minutes. So, all right. So, um, the question, the first question is about prerequisite completion dates. So let's say that you guys have a prerequisite that is completed before the program starts, but your college doesn't post that grade um, until a certain date. So for application processes, it's totally fine to go ahead and apply with a prerequisite still in progress. So don't worry about it for your application. Now, let's say that you're taking a prerequisite and your program starts on August 15th and you finish the prerequisite on August 10th, but the college isn't gonna post that grade until August 17th. Um, then just make sure that you're in constant communication with us about that. Let us know, give us your grade once the grade, the unofficial grade is posted and we will uh, work out a timeline for you to get us that transcript by, um, typically during ad drop swap. That way um, we have that before you are officially um, in the cohort. Um, so the next question is, do you also look at letters of recommendation? Um, yes, we do look at letters of recommendation. Um, here's the thing that I will say about letters of rec. Um, please be very thoughtful in your letters of recommendation. Uh, first and foremost, please do not submit more than two letters of recommendation. Um, our admissions committee reads thousands of applications every year um, and multiple letters, three, four, five, six. Uh, it's just a lot to ask um, to read all of those letters. And we do um, read every single application material that you all submit. It's really important to us to be able to continue to read every single application material you all uh, submit. So we do ask that you are respectful um, in that regard. The other thing I'll say about letters of recommendation is please be very mindful in who your recommender is. Um, if you have worked in a medical field, if you've worked in research, if you've worked closely with a professor um, who can speak to your academic abilities, if you've worked with somebody who can speak to um, your levels of compassion, I think that's a great recommender. Um, you know, if, if you're asking three people who are going to send a canned response who don't have that much personal connection with you, I would think twice about submitting that recommendation and I would focus those energies more towards your personal statement. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Absolutely send letters of recommendation, but do make sure that they're thoughtful letters of recommendation um, and that your recommender is going to be able to speak to you uh, very personally. All right, so let's see. Is it better to apply early decision even though some application materials are not finalized or still in prog progress? Or should you wait until your application materials are more complete uh, and finalized to apply? So here's what I'll say about this. Um, 
applying early decision does not keep you from consideration for future decision releases. So what I mean by that is, let's say that you apply early decision um, and you are not able to get all of the required materials, say you can't get a transcript to us in time. Um, that's fine, we'll just consider you for the next uh, round. So that's not an issue to go ahead and start that process um, and then just get everything to us as quickly as possible. Um, if you have supplemental materials, however, that you feel like are really going to help you and those things are in progress, um, things like a CNA license or a doula license or something like that, um, I would say to go ahead and apply early and put that that is in progress on your resume. That is going to give you the best of both worlds. We're going to know that you're working towards that goal. We're going to know that that certification is coming, um, but you are still able to get an early decision. Um, the one time I would say that go ahead and wait is if you know that your GPA is going to drastically increase with your next semester. Um, so let's say that you currently have a 2.9 GPA, but you know that at the end of the current semester that you're in, your GPA is gonna be a 3.2. Um, I would say hold off and apply when your GPA is a 3.2. Um, you can also always reach out to us, reach out to myself, reach out to my colleague, Sarah, and I'll make sure that you guys have our contact information. If you have specific questions about, hey, this is my situation, should I wait or should I apply? We'll give you our honest answer. Um, it's always our goal to set you guys up for success. So um, we'll let you guys know if we think that you should hold off or if you should go ahead and apply. All right, let's see here. About how many people apply to each cohort? Ooh, uh, Carly, I could do that math, but I'm not that good at it. Um, our admissions, uh, our acceptance rate is roughly 36 to 40% for each cohort. We have about anywhere from 80 to 140 students in each cohort. So uh, the math is there. I'm just not going to be able to do it on the spot. Um, but again, I think that the important thing to know is that our, our acceptance rate is, is roughly 30, between 35 and 40%. I think we're sitting right at 36 right now. Um, what are merit-based scholarships based on? This is a great question. Um, so your merit scholarships are based on a combination of things. Um, really, to receive a merit-based scholarship, you do have to have a strong GPA. Um, we also look at your resume and your personal statement. So um, this is an instance in which, again, um, having that really completed resume can definitely help push you over the edge if you've got a strong GPA um, to that area that's a merit-based scholarship. So do make time, make sure that you're spending time on those things. Um, how many people are accepted to each specialty of the MN Pathway to MSN program? That is a great question. Um, I don't have a great answer because it depends on the, path, the uh, specialty in question. So again, our FNP is our largest um, group, our nurse midwifery is our smallest group, and then they do fall everywhere in between. Um, so I would say the important thing here, and the reason that I think that students ask this question is because um, you want to apply for the option that's going to give you the highest chance of being admitted. Please don't do that. Um, apply to the specialty that you really see yourself working in. Um, again, we want you all to be successful in your careers as nurses. We want you all to be happy in the program. And I think that the key to that is applying to the specialty for which you are the most interested in. Um, don't let the selectivity start you or stop you um, from applying to any specific specialty. If you have specialty questions, if you're in between two specialties, you're not sure, um, do I want to do nurse midwifery? Do I want to do women's health? Which one's the right one for me? Um, connect with me and I'll get you guys talking to some of those amazing faculty members we have and they will be happy to help you guys kind of navigate which route is the best route to go. Um, so let's see. Well, not having all of the prereqs completed, but currently in progress, go into effect um, admissions decisions. No, um, we do not expect you guys to have all of your prerequisites completed. Um, it is a lot of a lot of courses. It's seven courses. It's a lot of work, um, and uh, we know how hard it is to be a student to be working or to be a student and be taking prerequisites on top of that. So, um, no, it will not affect your admission decision. Um, what I would say is, the more prerequisites you have completed, it can help. Your admission decision, certainly, especially if, um, you know, maybe your first degree GPA isn't that great, but you're just absolutely knocking it out of the park in these prerequisites, it can be helpful, um, but it's not going to be detrimental to not have those um, completed. Just make sure that you are working on them and you're giving yourself plenty of time to work on them so you're not unnecessarily stressing yourself out. Um, where can we find the information to apply for the early decision scholarships, please? Great news. You do not have to apply to those scholarships. Uh, we automatically 
automatically consider each and every single student that applies by those um, early decision and priority deadlines for academic scholarships. You don't have to do anything extra. Um, we will just automatically consider all of you guys. Um, so that answers the next question as well. Um, so Erin is asking, would you recommend applying by August 2nd? I mean, at this point, yes, we're having this conversation right now. So if you can, please do apply by August 2nd. Um, yes, is the answer to that question. Uh, as soon as possible is always the, uh, always my answer to when should I apply? Um, so already talked about, uh, recommendation letters. Is it true you get a waived application fee if you submit by 618? Um, if you guys do need an application fee waiver, just drop me an email um, and let me know what's going on and I will do my best to get that for you. Um, Olivia says, I'm sorry, you guys, my cat is in the room. So if he jumps into the screen, um, his name is Ron. He's really nice, but he doesn't like it when I'm talking and he can't figure out who I'm talking to. Uh, so uh, Olivia says, if we studied abroad in college, will we need official transcripts from that abroad university? Um, so the answer to this question is really, it depends. Um, it depends on who was issuing those credits. So if your university issued those credits while you were abroad, then we just need the, um, transcript from your university. If you did a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? If you did a transient study with an international university where you applied to an international university, were admitted to an international university, received credit from an international university, then we will need uh, the transcripts from the international university. If you have questions or you're concerned about that, um, reach out to me and I will take a look at your specific situation and we'll come up with a determination for you. Um, are in Emory students eligible for those scholarships that you just mentioned? Yes. So in Emory students are also considered for merit-based academic scholarships. So um, if you are an in Emory student, that June 1st deadline was the deadline for those scholarships, but we do consider all in Emory students for academic scholarships as well. Um, this is a great question. Um, so Sophia asks, with such a short word count, what are the most important things to highlight in the personal statement? Um, Again, I could talk about this for hours. So if you guys want elaboration, you can always call me. I'm, I'm happy to elaborate. But the most important thing in a personal statement, and I think that this um, is going to sound very simplistic, but it's very true, is that it is personal. Um, so I want to hear about you. I want to hear about what makes you special and what makes you tick and what is you to this um, program. And the reason I say I know this sounds simple is because we often get personal statements that talk about, um, you know, family members who have overcome hardship or um, what makes Emory so great. And um, for lack of, of a better way to say this, we already know what makes Emory <laughs> great, right? Um, so what we want to hear is what makes you great. Um, and this really is, your personal statement really is an opportunity to, to brag on yourself. And I know that that's hard for us as individuals to often um, sit there and talk about how great we are, but that's what I want to know. Um, I want to know what is driving you to nursing at a time when so many people would be um, running in the other direction. I want to know um, what makes you want to work those long 12-hour shifts and be on your feet all day. I want to know about a time when you experienced something that kind of knocked you on your, on your backside and you got back up and kept going. Um, because all of those things are what make you guys great nurses and they're what's going to make you great nursing students. And so I think that that for me is what really sets a personal statement apart is if you're able to say, um, you know, this is what I'm bringing to Emory because so much of what makes us great as an institution is our students. And so the more easily and early that we can see um, kind of that piece of the puzzle that you fill for us, the better that that personal statement is going to be. Um, so hopefully that helps and, and make it your own. You know, I know that it is short, um, but um, there are a lot of ways to just kind of make it your own and make it individual to who you are as a person. Um, do to do, do. So I think I've answered this question, but yes, you guys are able to apply and receive an admissions decision with prerequisites still in progress. Um, sorry, y'all, I'm trying to stay caffeinated here. Um, so there is not a set number of courses that you have to complete before getting an admission decision. Um, there's not a set number that you have to complete before you apply. There is a set number, you have to have all seven done by the time the program starts, but no set number before you apply. Um, what do I consider to be a competitive GER score? So, or sorry, GRE score. 
Um, so we consider 50% or higher on all three sections. Um, so yes, do not submit it to me unless every section is above 50%. It's gonna help you then. Um, we do not require the GRE. Um, so I think I talked about the prerequisites, not holding up your application. Biostats is acceptable for stats. Uh, we talked about MN specialties. Is it possible to petition to accept a prerequisite that falls outside the seven year window, specifically AMP2, um, taking AMP2 now, but took AMP1 over seven years ago? Um, I'll say yes and no. It is possible to petition um, something that falls outside of the seven year window, but the times in which those petitions are typically successful are if you're currently teaching a course material. So I've had students that have taken AMP2 10 years ago, but they're currently teaching AMP2. So that obviously covers the requirement, um, but not so much if you took AMP1 eight years ago and you're currently taking AMP2, we really need those courses to have been completed in the past seven years. And I promise it's not arbitrary. It's because uh, a specific AMP1 and 2 and micro, you guys are gonna use those classes day one. Um, so it's something that you really, for your own, to set yourself up for success, for your own success, you need to have completed within the past seven years in order to be comfortable enough to kind of hit the ground running in some of those first semester classes. So, um, you know, if you guys have a question about a prereq, I'm always here. You can always email me. I'll look into it. But um, typically, we are not going to waive those seven years or seven year requirements. Um, but it is just on those three classes. So, um, what if your micro, bio, lab, and lecture were separate? Um, as long as the two classes together are at least four hours, we will we will count that as a prerequisite. So um, the other thing I should note is if your anatomy and physiologies were taken separate, so if you took anatomy and anatomy was four hours and you took physiology and physiology was four hours, that's totally fine. Um, if you took microbio lecture three hours, microbio lab two hours, totally fine. Um, as long as the combination uh, meets the requirement. I will say this um, also about human growth and development. So let's say you took a childhood development and an adult development class. Again, as long as the combination covers conception to death, you're golden there too. Um, so I think I've answered the questions about apply early. Um, yeah, so this is a great question. What if my prerequisite GPA is above a 3.5, um, but your bachelor degree is lower? Uh, first of all, please don't get hung up on that 3.5 number. Again, it's an average. Um, and what an average really means is that while we do have some students that are five or at a 3.5, we do have some students that are below a 3.5. So uh, please don't get hung up on that. <laughs> we don't want it to be discouraging. We just wanted it to be informative. Um, but yes, we do take your prerequisite GPA into consideration, your science and math GPA into consideration, as well as something that we call a junior senior GPA, um, which is the last two years of your schooling. So again, if you were a traditional undergraduate student, junior, senior, if you um, have a master's degree, we take that into consideration. We change the students over the life of our education, um, and we would be very unwise to not consider your progression um, as part of holistic admissions review. So that is something that we do take into consideration, um, as well as things like, uh, you know, if you completed an associate's degree, then went into the military, and then knocked your bachelor's degree out of the park, um, you know, we consider all of those things. So looking at you as a whole student. Uh, do we recalculate GPAs or calculate science GPAs? We do a cumulative GPA. So cumulative GPA is, is very simple and very literal. It's every single college class you've ever taken. Um, so if you have a master's degree, we add that into your undergraduate degree. If you have a PhD, we add that into your master's degree and your undergraduate degree. Uh, we literally look at every single college course that you've taken, prerequisites, degree seeking courses, really anything. Um, do, do, do. Can you apply for an Emory scholarship after your first semester if you did not get one initially? This is a great question. Um, we do consider students um, for scholarships throughout the program, and there are scholarships who, that are specific for students continuing through the program. Um, I will say that your GPA does switch once you start with us. So after your first semester, we're looking at your nursing GPA only. We're not looking at your cumulative GPA from undergraduate, but there are specific um, scholarships that are available for continuing students. Um, so yes. What was the max length of the personal statement again? I believe it's 350 words. Um, there is no cap on that. Again, really what we're asking is just that you guys be considerate of us. Uh, try to keep it to a page. Um, that tends to be pretty reasonable for us to get through all of them. Um, 
but 350, I think is what it says on the website. But if you go up to 500, I won't tell anyone. Um, I'll keep it between you and me. Uh, if you are, yes, so I answered that question about the NMRE program. Um, see here. Hey, Allison, um, who is a current EHC employee, send me an email. We'll set up a meeting. Uh, can I speak to the Cloverdale Fellowship opportunities for return Peace Corps volunteers at Emory? Um, I can speak to the opportunity to the fact that we do have the Cloverdale Fellowship for returned um, Peace Corps volunteers. If you are a returned Peace Corps volunteer, reach out to us, let us know, make sure that you include it on your application, and we will um, talk to you guys about Cloverdale opportunities one on one. Um, yes, there are tons of scholarships for international students. Um, all of our merit-based scholarships are available to international students. And then there are some third-party scholarships that are specific to international nursing students. Um, so again, that's the time when that Google search is really helpful because you can put where you're from plus international nursing um, or plus US nursing um, scholarships and those will pop right up. Oh, you guys are testing my knowledge off the top of my dome today. What date does the MN program begin in fall of 2022? Late August. Uh, <laughs> my answer to that question. So uh, let me see if I can do some quick math here and pull up. My best guess is going to be, and please don't hold me to this, August 24th, 2022 is going to be my best guess for a start date for that fall MN program. Um, but we will post the academic calendar online as soon as it becomes available, but we typically start in the second to last week in August for the fall. Um, can we apply to the MN to MSN pathway even if our graduation date is a little bit after the start date. Um, unfortunately, no, you do have to have your degree conferred before you can start this program. This is a state board of nursing requirement. It's not an Emory requirement. So we have zero wiggle room for that. Um, so for students who are going to graduate, let's say you graduate in mid to late May, we would really encourage you to consider the MN program and then applying to an MSN specialty at the end of the MN program. Um, it's only going to take you one semester longer to go that route, and um, you will still have the opportunity to apply to the MSN specialties as an MN graduate. Um, how do we submit a letter of recommendation? That's a great question. Um, you can submit a letter of recommendation via email to nursingquestions.edu, and then we'll attach it to your application. How many times can you apply to any of our programs in your lifetime? Um, some programs will only allow you two to three times. We don't have a limit. You can apply as many times as you so That one's pretty easy. Um, I want to apply, but I haven't started any of my prereqs. I'll be starting them in the fall. I would say go ahead and apply. Apply early, even if you still have the prereqs in progress. Um, if we need any supplemental material to kind of uh, sit in that place, we'll, we'll reach out to you and let you know, but go ahead and apply with those prereqs in progress, not a problem. Um, you can get a decision without your prereqs being finished, so don't worry about that. Um, I think I talked a little bit about who can write a letter of recommendation. Um, anyone can write a letter of recommendation, just please don't let it be your parents. I've seen that before. I know your parents love you. Um, so please don't have your parents write a letter of recommendation, but anyone outside of your parents is, is a perfect person. Um, yes, so is there a date which we need to accept or decline admission for the early decision application round? There will be a date on your admissions letter if you're admitted to the program. Um, and that is the date for which you need to either accept or decline your offer of admission. Uh, should I submit test scores if your GPA is a little bit lower than average? Um, only submit them if they're good. And that's for everyone, regardless of GPA. Only submit those test scores if they're good. Um, I promise you guys, I know it's, it's hard when we move away from things that have been ingrained in us, like test scores, to think that it's not going to be, a, oh, they didn't submit a test score, it must be bad. Um, I promise you, we don't think that. Tests are a bit of a pain. Um, going to take a test is a bit of a pain. Um, so it's really, it's not a hindrance to not submit that test score. Please, 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 I'm begging you, only submit that test score if it's good. Um, are repeated prerequisite courses allowed? Yes. So you can repeat um, prerequisites if you want to. Just know that we do take a cumulative GPA. So let's say you uh, got a D in Gen Chem for semester your freshman year, like I did. Um, you are welcome to retake chemistry. We just do consider that first D in your cumulative GPA. Um, am I able to... Whoop, whoop, whoop. Am I able to apply now for fall 2023? 20, I like this question because of how uh, insistent I was to apply early. 
Uh, no, the fall 2023 application will open in June of 2022. So not quite that early. Um, Emory does not offer the prerequisites. Um, we do encourage you guys to take those um, at a regionally accredited institution. Uh, we love the Portage Learning classes because they're online and self-paced, but where you take those is up to you. Uh, we do not offer them at Emory. Um, how, uh, uh, what type of funds are offered to individuals who receive scholarships? Um, Emory scholarships can range anywhere from $1,000 a semester to full tuition. So it just depends on the scholarship. Um, you will submit your letters of recommendation yourself again, or you can have those recommenders email those directly to nursing questions. Um, can you please elaborate on the do's and don'ts when applying to multiple Emory programs? Um, so I'm assuming that this is a question about applying to multiple nursing programs. Um, so the biggest one is you can't do it. So <laughs> it's a don't all the way from top to bottom. Uh, what we really recommend you guys doing if you're between programs is to reach out to one of us, um, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about your goals, and we'll find the program that's right for you. But you can only have one open application in our system at a time. Um, so let's say you apply to our distance ABSN program on June 6th, and then on June 14th, you applied to our on-campus Master's of Nursing program. We would cancel your distance program um, application because we will just keep the latest application that you submitted active in the system. Um, do, 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 do. let's see here. Uh, yes, you can get a waiver for your application fee. Just let me know um, what's going on and we will work with you to hopefully get that for you. Um, do we need the transcripts for dual enrollment classes? Um, email me directly about that and I will get an answer for you on that. If we are not accepted in the first round, will our application be reconsidered in the next round? Yes, automatically. Um, I will provide my email in the chat box at the very end. Uh, does the personal statement follow a prompt? It does. Um, it is, why do you want to be a nurse and why do you want to attend Emory? So it's very vague. We keep it light. We keep it loose. Uh, we really want you guys to be able to make that personal statement anything you want it to be. So um, yes, 350 words. Um, if we apply early decision, is it possible that we could be deferred to regular decision? Um, it's possible that you could be waitlisted and if it will be automatically considered for each and every future um, decision round. Um, if we apply to the program by the 6-1 deadline, is it too late to update your personal statement? It's never too late. Uh, you can update your application at any time. Um, question about the Yellow Ribbon program, email me and we'll get you the appropriate contact at Emory Healthcare, and, or sorry, at Emory University, and they will um, give you everything you need to know about Yellow Ribbon, post 9-11 GI, any veterans benefits. Uh, for the nutrition prerequisite, could you describe what the class should cover? Yes, it should cover human nutrition. Um, we are pretty fast and loose with that nutrition class. Um, if you have questions as to whether or not a class will cover um, your nutrition prerequisite and you have already applied, please send us a, an email and we'll take a look at that. How do you submit your resume and personal statement through the application portal? There are hyperlinks for the personal statement and then your resume, you just upload it right there. Do W's on your transcript look bad for the application process? Um, no, as long as, um, you know, it's not extreme. And if it is extreme or you had something going on, um, please address that in your personal statement as well. So let's say that um, you had a really rough year or you had a parent pass away. We've seen those things that do um, have students um, taking a lot of W's. And as long as you explain that to us, it's not something that's going to look bad. Um, you know, it's not something that we automatically ping you guys for if you do have a W here and there. Again, life happens and we understand. Um, how do you assess, assess the academic rigor of courses on a student's transcripts? Do a higher percentage of higher level classes rank more competitively? Uh, yeah, I mean, we uh, do look at your full transcripts. So we look at the classes that you're taking, um, you know, and uh, the level of those courses. If you've taken you know, if you have graduate courses at the undergraduate level, we certainly understand that, you know, a B in a graduate course at the undergraduate level is showing a level of rigor. Um, again, that's part of holistic application review, so we will be taking those things into consideration. Um, if I took a transient course in, my main college did not calculate those courses into my cumulative GPA. Will we? Yes. Emory considers every single class you've taken. Oh, this is a great question. How do you view pass-fail courses, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic semesters? Uh, yeah, uh, guys, 2020 was wild. It was just wild for everyone involved. So we do um, understand that. And we understand that 
many, if not most colleges went to pass fail for spring 2020 um, and then gave you guys the options moving forward. Um, that's something that we understand and we will take into consideration when reviewing your application. Uh, let's see. It says on the application instructions that you submit your resume um, through the student status page. The student status page is just your application portal. So you will just log back into your application portal. It's where your checklist lives and you can upload materials right there. Um, how does credit you receive from AP classes affect your application? Um, I mean, it's, it, we like to see AP classes. Um, it's great for your, for your undergraduate, um, you know, transcripts certainly, but not really, uh, not really a huge, huge effect one way or another on your application. Um, your recommenders can email your letters directly or you can submit them yourself. It's up to you guys. Um, when will early decision applicants receive a decision? It depends on which program. Uh, those dates are online. Uh, so you can see um, for NMRI, those of you who applied by June 1st, you'll receive your application decision on July 16th. And then, sorry, let me go back to my cheat sheet here. I don't quite have the 2022 um, decision deadline. It's down in my brain yet. Early decision uh, will be August 20th for 2022 for MN and MN to MSN. Uh, yes, scholarships are offered for all of our programs, including the MN to MSN. Uh, if commencement is May 13th, is it too late to start the MN to MSN program in summer 2022? I would have to double check that for you, what the start date is. I would encourage you to reflect upon graduating and then immediately the same week starting a master's program. Um, it's going to be difficult just personally, but um, that's something we can work with you on. Email me. We'll figure it out. Um, if you take your Portage classes, that counts towards your cumulative GPA. Yes, we love the Portage classes. They're great. Um, will prereq grades affect early decision? Uh, if you have them in, it will be counted as part of your cumulative GPA. If you don't, it will not. If you're waitlisted, will it qualify for scholarships? Yes, absolutely. Um, you can still apply for third party scholarships online. And then um, if you're pulled from the waitlist, you'll automatically be considered for scholarships. Um, for on campus. And then last one, I've started my application, but I was confused as to how to add a transcript. Can I submit the application and then have the transcript mailed? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can have your transcripts mailed or you can email your transcripts to nursingquestions at emory.edu and we'll upload those transcripts for you. So don't worry about that. Early decision release for MM pre-licensure is August 20th. I think I made it to the bottom, guys. I can't believe it. Right under the wire to five minutes left. Um, I am going to pop my email into the chat box. Um, the secret sauce for all of our emails is first name dot last name at emory.edu. So I'm Megan Gerard, M E G A N dot J A R R A D at emory.edu. Um, and another thing that I want to say before I let you guys go is I often get emails from you all saying, I'm so sorry I'm bothering you, or I have questions, but I don't wanna bother you. Um, I promise you guys are really, you're never bothering me. You are I, not on my worst day, you are never bothering me. Um, I love helping you guys. I love being a resource for you guys. There is no question that I, likely there's no question I haven't heard, but even if there is, there is no dumb question. This is a new process. Um, these are new, new programs, these masters of nursing programs. So. We're here to help. We're here to help guide you um, and here to help be a resource for you all. So please, 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 I'm begging you, do not ever hesitate, not even for a nanosecond to email me. I'm here to help, um, especially when it comes down to the financial aid stuff. It is tricky. Um, and, you know, we are here to help you guys through that process. So um, really and truly, we are here to help um, and here to be a resource. So if there's ever that we can do, please reach out to me. Thank you guys for Thanks for the great questions, really. Those are some, some really solid questions. And hopefully um, you've got a clear sense of, of how to move forward. And um, we will make this the recording of this session available to you guys soon um, so that you have all of those dates and everything at your fingertips. So thank you so much. Um, I know I'm going to be chatting with a few of you later um, and hope to talk to all of you guys at, at one point in the coming months. Have a good one.